talk about the kidney battle with Brian coming out. I'm probably also a young contest and talking to Turner. I don't remember asking you about it before, but what put him ahead in that competition? Yeah, you know, so in terms of the kicking, um, you know, I thought it was a really good competition. Um, you know, I thought both Ryan and Tyler, um, they competed well, you know, in terms of how they approach it, but I thought they also competed well together in terms of the, the support, um, working together, trying to make each other better. Uh, so I thought I thought the competition was good. And, you know, at, and at the end of the day, um, Ryan was a little bit more consistent in terms of, of how we evaluate and what we're looking for um, in, in the charting and, and the team reps. And uh, you know, one thing we do know is that we have a very very quality guy uh, on the roster with Tyler as well. So. Um, you know, we, we have better depth, we're better at the kicking spot than we were a year ago because I think the competition was good for Ryan. It pushed him uh, to, to a level that he hasn't been at uh, with us so far. And then we also know we have Tyler um, if, if we were ever in a situation where we needed his services. In terms of uh, Keon, you know, he just, he was a guy obviously that, that was unknown to us in terms of the return game uh, until the summer. and. Uh, you know, he, he's done a really, really great job. He tracks the ball well. Um, he has a great, uh, that great uh, ability to, to have, to judge the ball in the air. Um, he's confident. Uh, and I think all those things together, uh, along with his explosive playmaking ability, um, you know, pushed us in that direction that, that he was the, the best suited for that power return position. Brother? You know, Matt, you got the turn a couple of different guys there. You mentioned it looks like Trey and you surprised the top of that, though. I guess what have you seen from them? Like, how different skill sets do they bring, respectively, just to that position? You know, they're obviously a little bit different in terms of, of running style. You know, Deuce is extremely explosive. Um, he has that ability to, to stick his foot in the ground and get vertical, and um, you know, really has an opportunity to make big plays in, in the return game. Uh, Trey returns the ball like a running back would. You know, except for he has elite top end speed. Um, so you know, I think they both bring a little bit. Um, you know, different strengths to it, um, but you know we we've been really pleased with the depth that we have in that spot, and I think that it has a chance to be a really explosive unit for us. That's a, when it comes down to kick kickoffs, was that a competition as well? Or not? Did you, how do you guys evaluate that in particular? And uh, you know, was that where like if you win one or is it two separate competitions? Uh, two separate evaluations in terms of the kickoffs and, and field goals. Uh, Ryan did a good job for us a year ago on kickoffs, uh, especially as we got into the season. Um, you know, I, I was pleased with him, uh, and, he, and he had a really, really good fall camp. And uh, you know, I think uh, you know, and, and we kind of, without even discussing the part of Max Schimento, when he had his opportunity to do kickoffs last year, was really good. Um, so we have quality depth at the kickoff spot. Um, you know, I know from a rhythm standpoint, it's something that, that Ryan likes to do. Uh, to stay in kind of a game rhythm with his field goals and, and kickoffs. Um, and, and he did a great job with it in the fall, so we're going to start that way and, and uh, see where that takes us. Uh, Ryan obviously went through some ups and downs last year, and then you guys went out and uh, brought in another kicker to challenge him. How did he handle all that? Um, and what have you seen from him throughout the whole process? You know, Ryan really, in my opinion, handled all of it um, dating back to a year ago like a pro. You know, he, um, you know, he went through his, his struggles, especially early in the year. Um, it never really affected his approach or his demeanor in terms of how he showed up to work every day. Um, you know, and, and it was probably best exemplified by the way he kicked in practice. You know, we talked about it at length a year ago um, that he was, was really solid throughout the course of the weeks. Um, so, uh, you know, I thought, and then he came out of it, uh, towards the end of the season, I thought he really started to hit the ball well. And then to bring in the competition, um, he never missed a beat. I think he knew that that was something that potentially would be coming, um, you know, but he never let it phase him. I think those two have formed kind of a bond and relationship together. Um, as a matter of fact, when I told them kind of where, where things were going to go this season, they did, you know, they were together when, when it happened. So. Um, you know, I, I think that that kind of relationship, that kind of camaraderie, is is, uh, is is good for both of them. But they also push each other to be kind of the best that they could, that they could be. And uh, so I think the competition was good for Ryan, and he's he's continued to to you know show up and, and do a good job anytime he's he's been asked to do anything. Corey, this is kind of an existential question about that. There aren't many place kickers that have such a such good competition right behind them going into a season. How do you think Ryan will handle 
the fact that you know if he goes into a little bit of a slump, you got to go, you guys got a guy that you believe in that might come in and, and replace him if need be. And you think it's good for him to have someone like that on the roster? Well, you know, I think it's good to have someone like that on the roster. I think at every position group, you want that competition, that that sense of urgency from each player. Um, you know, but I, I would go back and say this: I don't think anybody or anything uh, would put more pressure on Ryan than what he already puts on himself. Um, so, you know, he's extremely competitive. He wants to do well. I don't think he's going to be real worried about who's behind him uh, because I think he just wants to, to be successful just because that's how he's driven and that's how he's built. Um, so having, having a quality backup is, is a great thing for the program, but I, I don't think it's going to affect uh, how he approaches his work day to day um, other than knowing that he's being pushed and, and that's already been something he's been working with uh, through fall camp and spring ball. Go back to further up front. You guys are in the that you had with, with Jared and Patrick Payton going into camp. Uh, how does some of the depth pieces or rotational guys kind of present and, and show out there in camp? Do you leave camp with more confidence than you had going into it? Certainly feel better about uh, where things are at in terms of depth at the defensive end spot coming out of camp. You know, I thought uh, Byron Turner uh, was a big part of that. You know, I thought he really showed significant improvement uh, and consistency as, as fall camp went along. He flashed and made some big plays in some scrimmage situations. Um, and that's really what we needed to see from him. You know, Gilbert is a guy, obviously, we, that was a mid-year transfer who's played a lot of football. You know, he, was, he played a lot of football a year ago to a different school. Um, so I had a better feel for what he would, he would look like. But I thought both Gilbert and Byron um, both, both made progress through the course of fall camp and um, put themselves in a position where, you know, where we're going to have really quality depth at the defensive end spot. Jared? Special teams. Um, in terms of kick coverage, punt coverage, uh, the other person uh, on the field, uh, can you talk about that and some of the talent that maybe you're going to lose on this issue? Yeah, so um, in both of our cover units, um, you know, that's something that we work extremely hard at, in ter you know, just in terms of focus uh, throughout the course of practice, uh, meeting time, and, you know, we have some really quality players on, on both those units. Uh, I'll start with the punt unit. You know, I think, uh, you know, that core group of guys who are in the protection, um, some of those guys have been around for a couple of years doing it, Kalen Deloach, uh, Shaheen Brown, um, Jaheim Bell is going to be one of those guys. Tatum Bethune, um, our ends, uh, you know, Azaria Thomas, uh, Jarian Jones, I mean, guys who have been out there and taken a lot of reps for us at those spots uh, and take a lot of pride in it. You know, one of the things that, that the way Coach Norvell has structured this program is, um, you know, special teams are a, a point of emphasis in everything we do. So when you are called upon to be on one of those units, and especially if you're a frontline guy, it's something our guys take pride in. Um, so I think we do have a lot of, a lot of uh, really good frontline players on our punt cover unit, and the same could be said for our kickoff cover. And our kickoff cover we talk about as being an identity unit for the program, um, how we, the mentality and how we cover kicks. And uh, you know, I think our guys have done a pretty good job throughout the course of fall camp. Obviously, we're having ch uh, a chance to put it on display on Sunday night, but I, I really like where both cover units are right now. Go back to Iron. I don't know if I've ever asked this question before. Um, the special teams coaches, uh, how much do they impact what teams do? And the, the reason I ask is because LHO is a different special teams coach this year from last year. Do you expect anything different from what they did in terms of that approach? Well, you know, I mean, I think every program is probably a little bit unique in terms of that. Um, you know, each special teams coordinator is going to have kind of his style and his scheme in terms of, of what they do. But it's always going to be dictated in terms of what the head coach is comfortable with. Um, you know, some head coaches are really involved in, in what's going on schematically on special teams. Others aren't. Um, you know, so uh, every time we play uh, Coach Kelly's team, he's had the same special teams coordinator up until this year. So, you know, I have a sense and a feel kind of of what, what we could expect to see, but there's going to be some unknown with that. Um, but, like, in terms of, like, our program, like Coach Norvell is, is very involved in what we do on special teams. So, you know, I, I would think there would be a lot of consistency in terms of how that would play out. So I think it's unique to each each head coach and, and how much input and how much involvement um, they have in the special teams units. Anything else for JP? Good to have one for the last one. Yeah, 
kind of a bigger picture question. But Coach Fuller <clears throat> shared that you know he believes that he and Coach Rondell might be the, one of the better, maybe the best camps they've been around as a team. I know you guys progressed throughout a year, but but how much of the, the team and their performance is you kind of know in this part of the year, the preseason, of what you develop, and just how excited are you for what you guys have seen on the field in this last twenty practices? Well, you know, I, I, you know, I, I would echo their their sentiments in terms of, of how good of a camp that I thought it was, um, and I think a lot of it has to do with just the maturity in which how in which we handled our business. Um, guys showed up; they showed up to work every day. Um, you know, they, they they played hard throughout. You know, we we track everything, right? So, um, just the the explosive movements, how hard guys practice, um, all of that that GPS monitoring that we do. Um, reflected the fact that the guys were working but it wasn't just what was happening on the field it was also the way in which they approached the meeting room the way they handled themselves within the building um, there was just a very mature approach to the camp and, and I thought the guys handled it really really well which gives us a chance to going into game week to be in the best position we possibly can be in okay. thanks coach thank you awesome. thank you, thank you. Thank you.